If you're just getting into guitar building, you should stick around. In just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how a flush trim bit can save a lot of work while giving you a more accurate and consistent result. There are several variations of this bit and a few occasions to use them and more than one way to do it. So stay with me. Let's build some guitars. I'm Yoav and this is the Electric Luthier. Today I'll go over the very useful flush trim bits. We'll understand how and where we can use it and the different ways we can do just that. There are a few tricks and tips for these little blades and one use you may not have thought of. There are three main types of flush trim router bits which are used in slightly different ways and can be right for different occasions. They all consist of a shaft, a straight blade, and a ball bearing. They will always have the same diameter for the bearing and the blade. They differ in the diameter of the shaft, the length of the blade, and the position and number of the bearings. So what are they good for? The flush trim router bit as the name suggests, is designed to cut an edge in the exact line or edge as an existing line or edge. Also called a template copier, it's perfect for making one or multiple copies of an object or a template that has a straight enough edge. Guitars, and especially if you're following an existing design, will often use templates for both the shape of the body and the neck. Using a flush trim bit with a template will ensure you get the exact same shape every time. I go into much more details on how to make your own templates in a separate video and I'll link it here and below. On top of duplicating the outline of the guitar body, neck and headstock, these bits can be useful for carving out the cavities used for the guitar pickups, electronics, control knobs, tremor roll bridges, and the neck pocket. Essentially, after rough cutting with a bandsaw or a jigsaw, a big part of the guitar shape will be made with a flush trim bit. Let's understand the anatomy of the flush trim router bit. There are three main parts the shaft, the blade, and the bearing. The shafts come at quarter an inch, three-eighths or half an inch for the imperial measurements inclined and six millimeters, eight millimeters, and twelve millimeters for the metrics. Naturally, you should be aware of the type of the router you use and match the bits, especially if ordering online from who knows where. The blade diameter will determine the amount of material which will be removed when routing and the minimum radius you'll get in internal corners. More on blades when I mention quality and blade shapes. The blade length will determine the depth to which the router can reach. Since most routers have adjustable base plates, this will usually determine the maximum depth and the thickness of the template will also give a certain tolerance. You can often run a few passes with a short blade and go deeper every time, but you can't do a shallow route with a long blade. The bearing is what makes this a flush bit. The bearing's diameter must be exactly the same as the blade and provides the contact point for the template. The ball bearing also enables smooth motion along the edge while the blade does the cutting. Without the bearing, this would be a regular straight carbide bit. Some bits come with a double bearing for more contact surface, strength and stability. There are a few variations of these bits. The three common variations of this bit include a bearing on the top side, 
bearing on the bottom side and bearings on both the top and the bottom. Each one has a slightly different way of performing the same task. The router you have and the way you use it will determine which type of bit or bits you'll want to use. The portable router or trimmer gives a lot of freedom and is more intuitive to use. There's a wide range of routers starting at smaller trimmers you can practically hold in one hand not recommended and up to beastie plunge routers with great speed and force. The bearing will usually be closer to the shaft and the body and the template will be on top of the routed part. This will surely be the preferred way for most people to route cavities where you have no access from the outer side of the guitar such as pickups, controls, tremolos and neck pockets. These cavities are usually smaller than the router plate and therefore the router will be stable leaning on both sides of the bit while routing. The edges of the body and neck can also be routed with a handheld router and a template but extra care is required as half of the router has no support and any tilting will result in damage to the routed part. This is really the one downside to using a handheld router. A table router will provide better stability and often more strength and speed. You can also use all three variations of bearing positions depending on the direction of routing and if the template is on the top or at the bottom. The only real downside is that cavities are difficult or uncomfortable to route on a table because you can't see what you're doing. It is otherwise easier and safer for most routing jobs. When I mention a table router, it can be an actual table router, but it can also be any router which is mounted properly upside down and provides the same capabilities. This will involve removing the base plate and substituting it with either a designated one you can buy or one that you create yourself and fits your router and table. By the way, please hit the subscribe button and the bell beside it to get notified when my next video comes out. And do come check my website, theelectricluthier.com, where you'll find more related articles and much more. The bottom side bearing bit, where the bearing is at the shaft side, are probably the most common and versatile of the flush bits. You can mount them on a table router with a template on the bottom or use a portable router trimmer and secure the template on top of the routed part. With the bearing closer to the router itself, you can also use shorter bits which do not necessarily cover the whole thickness at once. When using with a handheld router, you need to maintain stability as the exposed blade can damage the wood with any hand wobble. They come at various length blades, so a set will be very handy. If you're using the top side bearing bit on a table router or even on a handheld, the template part is the one further from the router itself. This means that on a table you will have the guitar or neck below and the template on top. Whereas in a handheld router or trimmer, the template will be at the bottom. In both cases, you will need to make sure that the blade is long enough to cover all the wood needed and that the bearing is situated at the right depth to contact the template. This will need to be a blade long enough to cover the full thickness of the part you're routing and may require a stronger router. Not recommended for small trimmer routers. It may be a bit challenging unless you leave a very very thin amount of material to be routed when cutting on the line. With this type of router, 
you will have to route in one time. The top and bottom bearing bit incorporates bearings at both the top and the bottom and with the quick change of the bit of depth on the router you can switch from top bearing to a bottom bearing. You can't use them both at once. This may prove very handy when you want to change the direction of routing and not switch blades. More on routing direction in a bit. You will of course need the blade to be long enough to accommodate the full thickness of the guitar body or the part you're working on. Whenever I mention routers, I have to mention taking precautions and giving it the care and respect it requires. The router is essentially a little planer with an exposed blade. It's also the fastest rotating blade you will have in your shop and it can do a lot of damage very quickly. Remember to always be mindful of where it is when turning it on and off, unplug it when changing bits and use protective gear. Eye protection for the fast flying chips is a must, ear protection for that high pitch roar and mouth protection for plenty of dust. If your wood is very hard, your router is not that strong, or if a blade is just too short, you can always route in several passes. You can route a part of the way and create a sort of step in your wood. For the next pass, you can remove the template and aim the bearing at the part you've just routed. You can even give it a slight sanding if your template had a bumps and then continue copying that to the next pass. This is also handy in places where you want to gradually get to the full depth, such as truss rods or even pickup cavities. Now about routing direction. There are two reasons to be mindful of the direction you're routing. One is your safety and the second is the safety of the guitar to be. If you're routing in the wrong direction for the router, you may easily lose control and have a handheld router pull you or jump to places it shouldn't be, damaging the guitar and possibly you as well. On a table router, that may result in a piece of wood flying off and your hand slipping right into the blade area. Now without getting into the whole clockwise and counterclockwise direction of the blade, a very simple rule of thumb is that you should always feel resistance and feel like you're pushing the router and not being pulled by it. This is true for both table and handheld. On a table, you'll be holding the wood and not the router, but you should also push it against resistance and not resist the pulling of the router. Regarding the correct direction of the wood, as a rule, you want to always route with the grain and not against the grain to prevent chipping. The softer the wood and the longer the grain, this will be more critical. Ideally, you'll separate your routing into small parts which take the direction of the grain into account. Considering the routing direction for the router, you may need to change blade from upper to lower bearing and flip the guitar parts as well. This is where a table router with a double bearing may be handy. The importance of this will vary with the quality of the wood, the router and the blade, but you'll appreciate it when a chunk of a horn goes flying off your body. Putting the quality of the router itself aside, the blade itself can make a difference to the smoothness of the cut and the amount of chipping it may cause, just like a planer blade, but with 3000 rounds per minute. On the other hand, the price of the flush trim bit can start at the single digits and go up to three. A high quality fluted bit 
can cost up to $200. This type of bit will give superior results and will last for the routing of many many guitars. The number, shape and material quality will dictate the price. If this is not in your budget, there are great alternatives, but your approach to working with them should be more, let's say, forgiving. You should probably mind routing direction even more. If budget is a concern, you should experiment with a few different options, sizes and types to find the combination that best fits you. You can start with a small trimmer router that costs under $100 and bits that are less than $10 and go up from there. Get to know your router, your blade and the wood you're working with with small tests before you jump on the guitar. Always begin the motion away from the wood or the blade and approach slowly. And check your routing direction every time, especially if you're switching from table to portable and or flipping the guitar and template. Don't try and bite more than you can chew. Tackle small sections. Less is better than too much. And if you're not sure, just stop. If you feel you need to use too much force, stop and reconsider. Work slower and maybe do more passes. Be extra careful in thin, more delicate places such as the headstock. And now to the bonus question. How to use a flush trim router bit as a jointer? If you don't have a jointer but still want a straight flat edge for gluing or anything else, just use a straight edge as your template on the material you want to use it. Clamp it or tape it and leave just a hair of this almost straight edge and run it with the bearing along the straight edge. This will cover the basics and a bit more. There is more detailed information in an article I'll link below at theelectricluthier.com and please do subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when more videos come out. And until next time, go build some guitars!